Hey everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd likes to film stuff. Sorry for the bit of delay in videos. I got back from London and while I was in London, I got the flu. Probably the worst flu that I've ever gotten. It probably happened while I was on the plane and then when I went to the Ubuntu Insider event, Afterwards, I started feeling pretty crummy and pretty much slept the rest of the time while I was there So I didn't have a chance to show anything on camera, but I am back home I'm feeling just a little bit better now So I wanted to talk about the experience with this Ubuntu phone now this crazy sized box that you see here that doesn't even fit into the frame is a special edition box I think they said that they gave these to the first 50 people that they gave out these phones to so it's a very nice presentation very huge for me. Let's go ahead and take this sleeve off. Then we've got this interesting fold type structure here. So we just pull this off, pull this off, and there was an envelope inside of it. A nice orange color. And it's a letter from Mark Shuttleworth just thanking me for being a supporter. I was a supporter of the Ubuntu Edge and that was a phone that never actually came into development. I made a video talking about the Ubuntu Edge and all the neat features that it would have. I really loved that it would be able to be dual boot with Android. I really loved that it would be able to be a full Ubuntu desktop computer. It was a device that would be all in one, plus the specs would be really nice, sapphire glass, a accurately calibrated display, a lot of very nice features. But what we have right here is the Equarius E 4.5. This is their Ubuntu phone. A Spanish device that they've decided to put their OS on first thing. And this is not the Ubuntu Edge. This does not dual boot with Android. It does not have the ability to connect and become a full Ubuntu desktop. That's something that they will be doing in the future as far as I've heard. So right now this really seems to be a developer phone. A really kind of low to mid-range spec phone where the idea is for fans and for developers and for people who kind of want an alternative to either Android or to iOS. So this is the phone. They gave me a SIM card while I was there. They gave me a nice pair of headphones. This is Urban Ears brand. So all of this is just for the special release. This is not what you're going to be seeing when you purchase a phone. By the way, these phones are not available in the United States. They're going to be sold in Europe. Flash sales, they actually all sold out the first flash sales. So you do have to keep an eye on when they will be releasing them because they do sell it rather quickly. So this is what you will be getting. Otherwise, this is the rest that's in the box, just foam padding. So very big box, nice presentation for what they have here. So let's go ahead and open up the box to show you the phone now got a little quick tips thing. Their slogan is life at your fingertips. So they give you a little guide about how to do all the gestures and such. And underneath here you've got a couple of compartments. You've got your sync cable and also your charger. Got a one amp output. So setting all of that aside, let's go ahead and take a look around the phone. So the device itself looks nice enough. It's all plastic. It's got this white backing here. It's a nice matte finish. I would have liked it more in black. It doesn't have the most premium feel. Again, that's going to have to go along with the price. It's an under $200 phone. Not sure what the Euro conversion is, but I'll have that there. This is a dual SIM device, and I've actually been able to put my AT&T SIM into this. It has the 850 megahertz band for 2G speeds, but this is not going to work on 3G, and there is no LTE included in this device at all. So on the back, we have a eight megapixel camera. We've got our power button and volume rocker. On the bottom, we've got our speakers. We've got a micro USB charging port. Right here, we have a place for our SD card slot. Standard headphone jack, 5 megapixel camera on the front, 4.5 inch IPS display. Although I can see that the viewing angles are not that great on this IPS display. I would say that it looks okay, but at least the colors on this display don't look absolutely terrible. We do have a cool white point on this device, but the colors are not maddening. 
It's not an extremely wide gamut display, but it is good enough. The pixel density is 240 ppi. It's 540 by 960, so it's not incredibly high resolution, but it is good enough. It just falls behind the competition, especially when you were talking about something like the first generation Moto G even. It was a 720p display. So what we're looking at here really isn't a phone that you're going to be going for for the specs. This is going to be a device that you are going to be going for because you like the operating system. Inside of this device, we have a MediaTek SoC. It's got four CPU cores clocked at 1.3 gigahertz, and it's got a Mali 400 GPU clocked at 500 megahertz, one gigabyte of RAM, eight gigabytes of internal storage, and a non-removable 2,150 milliamp hour battery. So now finally, let's turn on the device from standby and take a look at the OS. We are greeted here with the lock screen where you have access to the time, the date, and there's a circle right here where if you double tap, in the center, it will give you various statuses on the phone that are occurring throughout the day. There is a cover that you can put the phone in and it has a circle opening. And my guess is that is available so that you can see what's going on throughout the day without having to open the flap all the way. Now this phone focuses on controlling it by swiping from the edges, top, bottom, left, right. So let's start from the right edge here where we're just gonna unlock the phone. I think that my favorite part of the navigation of this phone is the launcher from the left hand side. It's always going to be accessible, always from the left. So you can pin various applications that you want to stay here so you can always launch them. They're easy to access. Then if you do a short swipe from the right, it's going to bring you into your recent application. And if you do a long swipe from the right, it's going to show you all of your open applications. I do like this. I do think it's a little bit difficult sometimes to get this action right. Sometimes I'm just trying to swipe through something and I will accidentally activate this. So it's kind of gimmicky. I'm starting to more or less get the hang of it. You can see, here we go, short swipe, short swipe, then long swipe, and it's going to bring up all the open applications. If you go from the bottom here, it's going to bring you into app control. If you go from the top here, it's going to let you access this bar where you can see you have access to your notifications, you have access to being able to rotate the display, you've got downloaded files, access to location, so it's just a toggle bar here. Network sound, battery, time and date. I do like how they're handling notifications. What's nice is that right from this notification panel, you can tap on it and you can do a quick reply right from here and hit send. If I want to, I can hit call back because my mom called me or I can say message and it's going to reply right back to her right from here. If you double tap it, it's going to bring you into the application or the web application. This phone is decently responsive, although I do see that it is not the fastest in terms of getting things to load, like the web pages loading over and over again. Then if you want to clear a notification, you can swipe, you can hit delete, and delete, and there you go. Now, Canonical does not pride itself on having made an operating system that focuses on a sea of applications, a grid of applications where you have to click on so many different apps to get to a variety of different information. They don't want you to have to go from app to app to app to app to get all the information that you need going on in your phone throughout the day. They want everything to be aggregated into a couple panels that are easy to access. I do respect that they're trying to do something new here. So what they've done is create what they're calling scopes. So if you go from the left hand side, you can access this Ubuntu icon and it's going to bring you into your scopes, which aggregate a lot of different information on a couple of different panels instead of having to again, go into different applications. So underneath the today, we can see what's happening for today in terms of the weather, date. You can see when the next holiday is, major events, recent calls. You've got a video scope that aggregates all your videos together. So you have videos taken from the phone, popular videos from YouTube. We've also got ones for music. Here is my nearby panel. It tells me what the weather is like. It tells me some landmarks that are around here in Seattle. And I do like the effort that they have here with the nearby. I did have a chance to use this while I was in London when I wasn't dying, right before I died of the flu. I had a chance to go out and see what was near me, found Big Ben. 
I've got access to my activity, such as with Fitbit. I can connect Fitbit to this. We can see what's going on in the news. And then you can add more scopes if you'd like to, but going up from the bottom, this is the app management area. So not only can we star more scopes into here, but we can also arrange them. So if I wanted to hold down on here, you see we have these little icons that show up. And then I can have nearby show up first instead of apps. So from the left hand side again, there we go. So this is the first thing that I'm going to see. So you can add other applications like eBay or Amazon. So you can see here I have my Amazon scope, here I have my eBay scope. Now I don't know if there are any plans to make these scopes more advanced in the future, but for Amazon I can see, yeah, I can search on Amazon for things like toilet paper or Tamagotchis. And it's really nice to be able to see what it is that I would like to purchase, for example. But it doesn't let me do a one-click purchase from the scope. I'm going to have to view it on Amazon and it's going to have to go into the web browser. That's just a wish of mine that I would have for these scopes. I would really like to be able to bid on the eBay scope, for example, but of course, just the same, it's going to make you have to go into the browser. So it's going to make me view it on eBay. So that just adds an extra step in there. This is just my opinion for how I would like scopes to work. Maybe I'm missing the point. I do see you can add scopes like Instagram, and I would think that it would pull down your photos from Instagram. So I think that this is a pretty cool concept, but it's not doing anything really a lot better than an application or a widget would do, in my personal opinion. And what also becomes a bit cumbersome is that you can add tons of scopes, lots of scopes, multitudes of scopes. I don't even know what I'm clicking on anymore. But uh, let's just show you for example. So now we have all these scopes at the top here and I would have to endlessly swipe through scopes whoops and accidentally access the wrong thing endlessly go through tons of scopes and I don't even know which scope is where anymore so it becomes more convenient ironically to just have a sea of apps because at least I can see the icons and where what is what instead of having to swipe through endless panels so if you have two, three, four scopes, I can see that this would be kind of cool and useful, but otherwise not so useful. I guess we shall see what develops with all of this over time. I hope to see more native applications being developed because right now it's just a bunch of web apps. I'm not so much a fan of web apps. Now in terms of using this phone and overall performance, I find that it's reasonably responsive, but I would like to see this OS on better hardware. I see that there are quite a bit of slowdowns here and there. I noticed while playing YouTube videos that it can't really handle the YouTube videos. It slows down, pauses. YouTube videos are really a loss, unfortunately, watching them on this device. Now as for the camera interface, it's very, very simple. We have access to HDR. You can also enable the grid lines. You can turn flash on and off. You can control the picture quality, fine quality, normal, basic. We have geotagging, also a timer. Then for video, it looks like we have the ability to turn on HDR as well. You have the ability to film in 1080p, 720p, 480p. You've got a video light. You can turn your grid lines off, geotagging, and you also got a timer as well underneath here. I think that the quality of the pictures is really just mediocre. I can see that there's a lot of noise reduction in the images, so in the end you don't end up having a lot of detail in the images whatsoever. I'm at least happy that the colors don't look so bad in the images. But really, don't expect much. And as for the videos, I can see that 
the camera really struggles with the frame rate sometimes. It really is playing back slow like this. It looks slow motion blurry to me. I'm not so happy how this phone can freeze up sometimes. I notice that when I'm underneath the gallery, I see that happening quite a bit. So I'm gonna have to go and actually shut down this application to get it to start responding again. And I see it takes a long time to load things like a video. Again, slow, what in the world? So definitely not the best. I hope that there are some improvements. Overall with this device, I do think that we have some pretty interesting things going on. We do have a brand new operating system. I really do like how they have the launcher. I like how you're able to switch between applications. Once you get it down, it can work pretty well. And I also really like being able to see all of your open applications. I think that there is an interesting design language here. I don't know if it's extremely intuitive, but it is interesting and unique. These scopes have promise, but they really don't offer anything that applications don't do better or that widgets don't do better. This is their first run at this. And I think once they have this on better hardware and once they have this able to actually become an Ubuntu desktop, then we might be talking, but right now it's just for the fans. It's just for developers and people who are interested in getting to know this platform. For me, it's always fun to try something new. I don't regret going and having a chance to go and play with this device. And I do thank Canonical for sending me out to London because I didn't pay for that. Although I ended up getting pretty sick while I was out there. That, that was a nightmare. So hopefully I did all right with this video. I'm going to edit this, upload it, go back to bed. And I'm sure you will all be seeing me in the near future and more regular videos. So thank you everybody for watching. This has been Erica, the technology nerd who likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Tell me what you think about this Ubuntu phone. If this is something that you'd be interested in, etc., etc. And sorry for me being so short, but have a good night.